All right. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Frederick Fenamisto. I'm a fresh new faculty member. I just arrived from Brazil three weeks ago. I'm still <laughs> trying to find my place. Uh, not just in Florida, but also in the university and, and the College of Arts. So it's really great to be here today and meeting all this great research. Um, so usually people in design, they have one foot set in uh, engineering side or one science or social science and the other uh, foot they have set on in the arts. And usually graphic designers, they are set in foot on the fine arts. But I'm this strange guy who set foot on theater. And you will understand why, because I'm quite interested on the design of uh, digital technologies and the uh, social and emotional impact of those technologies in our everyday lives through the framework of oppression studies, uh, especially Latin America branch that has been um, pioneered by people like Paulo Freire, but mostly Augusto Wall, who is the creator of theater of the oppressed. So for those who don't, are not aware of what I'm talking about, try to connect with this presentation with a very simple uh, memory. Those times during the pandemics, once you felt like your whole body rhythms changed because of these technologies that you rely to for uh, keeping up with your everyday life. And then you uh, intensified if you were not already <laughs> using it too much. Now you are overdoing it and then you feel like those rhythms, those algorithms, these logical rhythms that this technology in bed, they are taking over your body rhythms and then like I was, perhaps you, you can identify you relate to me, I was not being able actually to sleep well because all my circadian rhythms have been messed up because these technologies, they keep pumping messages and drawing my attention and especially my interest and my motivation to always check screens for reaching out to other people. And, and, and this has been uh, conveyed uh, very nicely by a graphic designer called Bratislav Milinkovic. However, uh, these kind of graphic design representations are static representations of a dynamic phenomenon. This is not exactly what I'm interested in, although I'm, I like those graphic design representations of these complex uh, situations. I prefer something more um, fluid, something that adds time to the representation, especially that adds the chance to change what we are representing so that representation is also politically engaged with the transformation of reality. And that's why I moved to theater. So if you felt like uh, I felt during the pandemic, so in any other situation where technology was coming and bringing uh, foreign rhythms and messing up with your uh, uh, self-consciousness, uh, your self-body consciousness. Welcome to the techno-oppressed group, a group that I would love to uh, open again in uh, University of Florida, still trying to find peers to share this kind of uh, research project. Here you see how I learned theater of the press at the Centro do Teatro do Oprimido in Rio de Janeiro, a center that has been founded by Augusto Buell, Buell the creator of this uh, approach in the in 1980s and I've been attending to courses there uh, for now almost 10 years and in this particular picture you see how it works so we represent an oppressive interaction everyday oppressive interaction here I'm playing out the role of a, a, a man or a sexist man who's harassing a woman who feels like he has the right to, to approach women in that abusive way and he's being protected by other oppressive men men who Things that the world centers around uh, women, uh, male's power, and they feel like this is moral. Although for the women this is immoral, and after the second image that women try to uh, react to that oppression and and counter the oppressor, and the theater of the press has been experimented in many different areas, many different uh, kind of oppression, not just sexism, but also uh, uh, work exploitation racism and the likes, but I'm interested in adding up to theater of the press a uh, closer look at the role of technology in mediating in either amplifying oppression or fighting oppression. So I see technology in this um, uh, arena of, of, of dispute, who can define its purposes and design is this process where, this, where technology's purposes 
becoming materialized into the functions, but also in the appearance, in the form. And that form of digital technology uh, is also a, 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 it's a timely form. So it, it has a time shape. And here you see uh, the interaction happens through time. There is a, a technology which is common, everyday technology, the AI uh, feed sorting news for you. And they, they, the AI has a bias towards showing you shocking news. So it's no uh, coincidence that you see mostly shocking news in your feed. The AI, AI has this bias towards frustrating you so that advertisers can um, take an opportunity to show you some uh, products that can uh, build up on your fragilities. And this has been discovered through these laboratory theater sessions in an embodied way. So I'm not just describing this and as discourse, this, the participants in this theater of the, pre theater of the techno press group, they discover that by interacting, replaying those algorithms, incarnating them in their interactions. And finally, I, I raised many hypotheses. I don't, not, I don't have time to go through all of them and I want to be short. I just prefer to do a very quick experiment with you if you would like to, to join me. Can we perhaps become less oppressed by dancing our algorithms? And I'm playing out with the word algorithms that usually is written with an I. I, I, re I replace the I for an Y because I'm interested on seeing algorithms in a more concrete way, in a more physical, how they affect our body rhythms. And here is the game that you, if you would like to play out, you can just join. I'm, I'm, I'm not possible to join this game because I'm gonna play out the instructions, but if you would like so, you can open your, um, your camera and you can play out the game or you can just uh, close your eyes and imagine you playing the game Feel free to do so. Uh, it's not really very good to do that through online, like we're doing remotely here, using this kind of technology that have a bias, uh, that propose a, a rhythm that is not really socialized. It looks like we're socialized, but we are not quite there. Anyhow, that's the best what we can do now, and uh, we will take the best of it. So we are trying to hack these technologies uh, through these kind of uh, theater of the press exercise. This is called Everyday Dance Game, and if you would like to join, it will take just a few seconds. So please uh, close your eyes and then try to remember what were you doing yesterday at this precisely same time of the day. So what were you doing? Were you working? Were you at home? Were you with your friends? Were you with uh, some other different people? What were you doing with perhaps an animal were next to you? And what were you doing to them? So now you try to move your body and then uh, try to grasp the rhythm of that activity that we we're doing at that precise time yesterday. So try to re 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 uh, be a repetitive as much as the, tech the activity was. All right, go ahead now and think about what you're doing before that activity, the very same activity before that. And do again new movements, new movements that are related to that activity. And now I ask you to advance further to the very uh, late moment after the activity that you were doing precisely at this, at this time yesterday. So advance further to the next activity and do the same. Try to reenact those movements, those repetitive movements. And now finally, you combine all the movements into a dance and you can open your eyes and check out what other people are dancing <laughs> in, your, uh, in your screen. So I can see there's a lot of people typing. <laughs> Some people are sometimes uh, 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 using a cell phone or even other kinds of technologies, a car, for example, many people are driving. And what this exercise reveals is that there's a lot of rhythms that have been designed by someone else who's not us, right? I'm not going to go through uh, the research questions of this uh, uh, research project in length. I just want to give you just three questions. I'm not going to even touch upon the methodologies, but think about how profound are these questions. What is the impact of digital technology on our bodies? And 
uh, conversely, how our bodies also impact those digital technologies, how we are also part of this process of defining our, uh, our everyday algorithms. But who are the percussionists? Who set the tone? Who set the, the rhythms? And what they want from us? What are intentions? Their political agendas? Their marketing interests? I don't know. That's something we need to research and, and look much closely and, and dance. And here there are very interesting approaches for learning about something that through any other means we can't be scrutinized. And finally, uh, that's the most interesting political question. How can we own those algorithms and hold those percussionists accountable and publicly scrutinize them so that society can... Uh, design its own rhythms in a participatory, democratic, perhaps, and liberating way. So that's it for now. Thank you very much.